There's a bug in Sudo right now that's getting a lot of buzz. CVE 2025-32463. Uh, and for vulnerable versions, any user on a box can escalate to root. There's POCs out there that are 40 lines of bash code. And the bug has been present for over two years now in Sudo. Um, it's July 2025. This, this has become public. And uh, if you haven't patched, you're really going to want to do that. Um, in this video, we're going to understand what the issue is and uh, exploit it. We'll explore change root, NSS, or it's NS switch. D and DL open, and by the end, you're going to understand how it looks. Um, this is OXDF. Let's dive in and get started. Let's start out with the NIST page, which doesn't give us a lot, but it gives us a, a, some information we'll use. Sudo before 1.9.17 p1 allows users to obtain root access because Etsy NS switch.com from a control user controlled directory is used with the change root option. Um, it's just one sentence, but it's actually a pretty dense sentence, and let's, let's break it down. Um, Change root is a really interesting concept in Linux where you basically say, I'm going to run this command, but I want to, when I run it, the root of the file system is really going to be in this directory. And so from within that process, it's just going to look like the root is this is it, and that's all that's there. But behind the scenes, you know, this, the OS, the kernel knows that there's, it's just that one directory. Um, now, by the time the target program is running, the change root's going to be full in effect. But it turns out that in way, the way it works with the sudo option is it actually impacts where some of the config files load from, including nsswitch.com. So what is nsswitch.com? Well, let's check out the man page. Um, see, this NS switch, the, uh, the name service switch configuration file um, is used by the GNU C library and other applications to determine the source from which obtain name service information in a range of categories and in what order. Each category is identified by a database name. Uh, the file is a plain ASCII text with columns separated by spaces or tabs. The first column specifies a database name. The remaining columns describe the order of the sources to query a limited set of actions that can be performed with the lookup result. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's scroll down here a little bit and we can see, here's kind of an example of what an NS, NS switch config file looks like. Um, and it basically says, depending on how you're gonna, how you're gonna do the lookup, um, this is the database from which to perform that, to pull that information. I'm um, sorry, this is the database, and this is specifying um, how to find it. Um, interestingly, the part, and the part that really matters here, because we don't, the fact that this gets loaded, what, what's important is that it's going to look for lib, lib nss underscore service dot so dot x. Um, and by that, it means like if it's password, it's going to load lib nss underscore paswd dot so dot two, for example. Um, and that is going to be the thing we're going to exploit because we control, if we control this config file, we can control the name of the shared library that gets loaded. Um, and that's running code, right? Um, now, if you're anything like me, when you first started hearing about this, you're thinking, yeah, sure, but shared libraries get loaded from very specific directories. Uh, and ones that typically a user can't write to. And, and that's true. When you load an ELF binary, um, the LD binary is responsible for checking for the required libraries that need to be loaded into the process memory. Um, and they typically are checking in slash lib, slash user lib, slash lib64, slash user lib64, um, so that it's configurable. But um, for this to be exploitable across the board, you know, you'd think, oh, my library has to be in one of those directories. Um, and that is true for when the, when, when the library is referenced by the ELF file. Um, but and this is kind of cool. We'll jump over here into grep.app. Um, I love this thing for just searching across a ton of Git directories, uh, GitHub repos. And if we search for lib nss underscore, and I'm going to put a, um, almost 1600 results, but if I put a close quote here, um, we'll find, let's see here in system D. Now this is in a test, um, a, a test file, but we can, we can at least open it up and take a look. Um, we can see here in system D. Uh, we're doing something where we're here, we're taking, we're taking string join a, and we're sort of joining lib nss underscore with the module name with dot so dot two. Um, now again, this is the, this isn't the actual vulnerable code, but, um, I didn't actually find that, but, uh, it's the same idea. And it turns out this is what's happening is this it's using string concatenation to build a path. And then it's passing that path to the DL open function right here to get a handle. And then it's load, you know, then now it's got access to that library. Um, and that makes sense because we don't know the names of the libraries we need until we run, in, until we open and look at the config file. And so we need to, die, rather than loading them with LD at runtime, we're going to load them with DL open. Now, 
take a look at DL open. Um, open and close a shared object, pretty simple. Um, but the interesting part we need to look here. Uh, let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So if the file name contains a slash, then it is interpreted as a relative or absolute path name. And that's, that is the trick. Because if we can pass in a slash in this code that looks something like this, then it will say, oh, I'm not going to check the regular directories. I'm going to check relative to my current directory. Um, and so now, as we start putting all these pieces together, we control nsswitch.com, which the line will, will be, the line can, in that file will be used to generate the path, which is used to load a shared object file with DL open. If there's a slash in that name, it's going to be treated as a relative or absolute path name, depending on whether the slash is at the beginning or not. And that is, uh, these are all the puzzle pieces we need to build our POC. Um, I've got a POC up here. There's a bunch of POCs out there right now. Um, I think this one's nice, so we'll take a look at it. Um, it's uh, one thing that's really nice is they actually made a Docker file, so we can actually spin up a vulnerable Docker container and run exploits in there, and we'll do that by the end of this video. Um, let's start by coming here. Um, I've already cloned a copy of this repo here. Um, not, you know, only a few files here, but let's take a look at sudo changer. This is the exploit. So let's work through this and using the puzzle pieces we've already gone over. Um, first, we're going to make a staging directory. It's just going to be make temp d makes make a temporary directory. Um, it's going to be named stage with some you know some variables there. Um, we're going to go into that directory. If we can't, we exit. Um, if no, <coughs> if the number of arguments is is zero, um, so basically if we don't provide anything other than just running the script, then we're just going to make the command bin bash. Otherwise, we're going to take whatever comes after the script. You know, um, so you can run an ID or ls dash la slash. Um, otherwise that becomes a command and then we build this command exactly here. So we're going to say, uh, the command is this string, and then we're going to escape slashes just to make sure they work. Um, then this whole section right here is we're just going to build a C, um, shared object source file. And so all this is going to do is we're going to include this stuff. Um, the attribute constructor right here is code that's going to run when the shared lob shared library is loaded. Say that three times fast. Um, so. We are basically saying, when this library gets loaded, run this thing. We're not even going to provide the functions that are actually needed out of this. We're just going to basically say, make sure we're running our user is root, make sure our uh, group is root, go back to the root of the file system, and uh, run bin sh, uh, sh minus c, there's our command, and boom, we're going to be, there we are. We're going to run whatever we try to run. Um, and then, so all of this is just one long cat command to put that into a file, woot leet.c. Um, we're going to make two directories, uh, woot etsy and libnss slash underscore um, into woot etsy nss ns switch .conf, We're going to put password and then slash woot1337. Then we're going to also copy the group, the etsy group file into that directory so that we have, a, it's just a file that needs to load from within the change root. Um, so we'll have it there. And then we're going to compile as a shared library, our source file into libnss underscore slash woot 1337 so.2. Now, when we run sudo and it loads this ns switch comp file, it's going to try to load lib nss underscore slash woot 1337 so.2. Um, just like we saw in this test code, here it is. lib nss, the module name, which is now slash woot 1337 so.2. So what that means is, because when this eventually gets passed to DL open, it's going to say, oh, there's a slash in it, so treat it as relative. So it's then going to say, I need to go into the lib and the, the current directory, lib nss underscore directory, and I need to find woot 1337.so.2. And hey, we've provided that library. Um, so then all we do here is run sudo with the change root option of woot. Um, it doesn't matter what we put here, and uh, we're going to get a shell. So let's take a look. We can give this a try. Um, I'll go ahead and just take a look at the Docker file. It's pretty simple. We're going to run, it's Ubuntu. Um, we're going to run, app, we're going to basically install some stuff here that allows us to build, build things. Um, we're going to then install a vulnerable sudo version from the app directory. We're going to make a user named Pwn. Uh, we are going to copy this exploit script that we just went through into the Pwn user's uh, home directory. We're going to run uh, change own to make it accessible to the Pwn user. We're going to run as the pwn user from within the home directory, and we're going to run the bash command. And that's basically it. Um, they also give us, uh, if we do vim uh, run.sh, all that's going to do is build the Docker file from build that Docker file and then run it um, within that context.
So we can do that. Uh, ooh, that's not what I want to run. Uh, run.sh, and we run this. Um, it'll take a little longer to run the first time you build it because it has to pull a bunch of other things, but that's working well. Um, you can see I'm here. I'm in, I am the pwn user, and the exploit is there. Uh, if we go ahead and run this, and we say we give it the id command, we can see we are running as root. That's pretty cool. If we give it nothing, we get a shell as root. Um, and again, that's just happening the way we would see. Um, I actually haven't looked in here. Let's see, is it here? Um, oh, it's gonna be. It would be in temp, wouldn't it? Um, where? So there's our there's our temp directory. You can see here's our two directories that it created, um, as well as the source file. Um, there it is. Uh, if we look in lib, there we have the library that gets loaded. And if we look in woot, at um, I guess we need slash Etsy, and there is our group file and our NS switch file. So um, that's it. Um, it's a neat vulnerability. I, I think a cool one for people to find, and um, and one that you're definitely going to want to patch if you have not already. Um, I mean, it is a privilege escalation, so someone has to get on your box first. But um, if they do, they're root. So. Um, that's it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll talk to you next time.